look. I know I'm a few years older than you, but you're my sister, and you've been caught. Sometimes, a simple decision, even if it's to do nothing, impacts a person's life. I first realized this when I was living in San Francisco. After an upstairs neighbor pegged me with a soiled prophylactic, I was faced with what I considered to be a grown-up decision. What is an appropriate reaction to such a vulgar display of disrespect? Being occasionally observant, I noticed that there was only one window of my building opened at the time. So, I did what any adult would do in that situation. I shouted confrontational threats at the window and invited the culprit to join me outside. A young girl who couldn't have been much older than 15 poked her head out the window. I asked her if she had thrown the rubber. And she said she hadn't apologized. I felt foolish. She was just a kid. And I was not comfortable with this potentially authoritative position. The whole thing reminded me of a terrible time in New York when I worked at a trendy clothing chain on the Upper West Side. The train, chain prided itself on being alternative by selling pre-ripped jeans for $100 a pop and shirts deemed punk simply because a pack of rats in the storage facility had gotten the better of them. At first, I thought my boss was pretty cool because he was an aspiring actor. He was really witty and he was always calling me precious and he used words like faboo. It was really encouraging to work with other aspiring artists. Until I realized they were all much older than me and doing the same job. Except they were actually taking it seriously. <laughs> anyway, each time an employee had to leave the building, even if it was just for a smoke break, a manager had to be paged to pat down and search the employee. Mandatory meetings on the prevalence of shoplifting were held Monday mornings at 8. We had to serve an hour of door duty each day, warmly greet customers as they enter and exit the store, tackle them to the ground if they set off the detector surrounding the door. If you are lucky enough to catch one of these smarmy shoplifters, you call Uncle Bob with your handheld walkie-talkie. This cues the manager to detain the shoplifter in the dungeon basement to be interrogated and arrested. The Abu Ghraib of fashion. The first criminal takedown when I was at the door happened when my door partner spotted a homeless man with a bag full of corporate rocker clothes. Sure, I noticed he was homeless and carrying a large bag, but even if I had caught him shoplifting, I wouldn't have called Uncle Baba. <coughs> I felt obliged to bring this up to my door buddy when the man was detained in the basement. My partner was shocked that I even considered hesitating. I pointed out that the man clearly needed the clothes, much more than any of the yuppies who could actually afford to buy the overpriced rags. And he called me a cosmonaut. Pretty sure that's not what he meant. <laughs> anyway, I, I guess he told on me because I didn't have to report for door duty for two weeks. I was just getting used to my good luck when I was put back on the door. It was a busy Saturday afternoon. Two of my coworkers had called in sick. I guess they were pretty desperate for a door worker because I wasn't even partnered with anyone. A meek, red-headed girl with fake nerd glasses shuffled past me. She was around that awkward age of 14 and she just looked guilty. I made eye contact with her, hoping she would read my psychic message, do not make me call Uncle Bob. A few minutes later, she strolls into the detector's range and sets off the alarm. She looks at me, unsure whether to run or talk with me first. Out of the corner of my eye, I spot my manager rushing our way, like a shark following the scent of blood. Maybe you bought something in another store that set off the alarm? Did you leave something in the dressing room? I was trying to help, seeing how scared she looked. I knew that if she had enough time, she would return whatever it was she'd stolen. I had a feeling this was her first and last time attempting to steal, and I just didn't see the point in her name caught. My manager came over and asked could he inspect her bag. Her face was flushed, and she blurted out she left her wallet in the dressing room. But my manager didn't buy her story. He ordered her to stay where she was, and he opened her bag. He pulled out a $10 pair of panties, holding them up triumphantly for everybody to see. The girl started bawling and apologized straight away, but my manager showed no mercy. He grabbed her by the arm and led her to the basement co-worker came up to me and said, nice work. 
I wondered if I was going to be sick. And if I was, how much they docked for my paycheck for dirtying the polished floor. An hour later, a large, disheveled man, obviously a detective, barged towards me, demanding the location of my manager. I pointed him towards the basement. At the end of my shift, I watched him violently drag the girl out of the store. He quickly caught a cab, opened the back door, shoved her in front of him. He punched her in the back of the head, and she collapsed into the cab. Before I could react, they were gone. So, sis, what I am trying to say is, back in San Francisco, I decided to accept my young neighbor's apology. And I went on my way. <laughs>